there. Why am I picking the cards? Anybody got a guess? Because they're getting they're overgrown. And they're they're getting overgrown and they're going to come out real easy. Uh -huh. Which I like a whole lot, right? <clears throat> now, what I haven't done here, but I will, if somebody will, um, go up there and grab the watering. Because before you transplant anything, that leak, we'll skip that one. All right. Before you transplant anything or mess with any plants at all, always water your soil. It's like oil. It lubricates them. They don't get torn up, okay? When I am, am working seedlings, seedlings and they're falling apart, not working, I'm like, forgot to water them again. Go get the watering can, you know? Yeah, just go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's not gonna take much. But don't be afraid to soak these guys good. Just lay it on them. Okay, great. All right. So now we're gonna talk the fact that there are many ways to get these out of the cells, okay? It's hardly any twigs in a garden, you know, mm. unless you unless you don't have enough light, which I guess a lot of people have that problem. These I bet are just going to pull out pretty easy. See? Yep. So you can just yank these out. Okay. If you're trying to get stuff done and they're this set, we're going to have to step these all up. But we can do that pretty fast. There's a bunch of us here, right? Okay. I'm going to get some work out of it. All right. This is my preferred way to do it, and people always wince when I do it, but it works awful well. And I'll just keep doing that until I have them all out, you know? But what is it? Does it, it matter, matter, that, does it, matter that, you, that it did that? No, not at all. Or, it won't miss or a beat. breaks? Oh, if it breaks, it matters, but hardly any do. Okay. So that okay. is, okay. Hmm. And this is a classic thing, right? It's like professional gardeners, and I'm not enough of a professional because I have a hard time doing it. They think nothing. They come over and they go, small one, big one. Oh, I know. Uh, I, I can't. Oh. I know. Right. Tell me about it. Uh, I so, can't do it. Cut these all up. Later. And what I'll do, if nothing <laughs> else, is I'll stick them in a big pot and give them to the garden for the hungry. You know? oh, there you go. Smart. You know? um, okay. So you know, I did damage a few. If you're if you're trying to get a lot done, you say, okay. You know. Yeah. I have 128. Gotcha. gotcha. And if I want a few more, I can just take the doubles. Gotcha. You know. And so it goes faster. All right. So now we'll look at how we go from there. We would not go into 128s with those, obviously, because they were 128s. So we're going to go to 72s. 72s are right here. And we need somebody to go get um, a bunch of that potting soil. Okay? Yeah. See directly in the side. Yes. Right? Yep. Okay, yep. now did, when you planted those, did, did you just kind of go through one, two seed? One, no, I'm going to show you seeding okay. techniques. Okay. That's coming up. It's on the outline, right? I got gadgets. Okay. All the way down to vacuum cedar, right? Yeah, okay. The vacuum cedar is the cat's meow, but you don't need it for a home, okay. a home operation. It sure works good though, you know. Troy's greenhouse. The um, those who heard my story about the cat, about the Catholic and the and the uh, Baptist um, slugs, his same mama, right? She laughed at him when he bought his vacuum cedar. Within a month, she's like, "How do we ever live without it?" Because I mean, they do tens of thousands. I mean, you know, he'll do like nineteen thousand flats of tomatoes in a summer. You know, <laughs> for everybody to come in. Private, and then you. Take your seeds, right, and you roll them around on the tray, and then you hook, you have a vacuum, oh, just a regular shop vacuum, right? Yeah. And you put it, plug it in, set that tray down, and it sucks a seed into every hole. Oh, I see. Then you take it, you flip it over with the vacuum still on, so that it's now over the seed, the, the cells, right, and you turn off the vacuum, and they all drop in place. <laughs> That's pretty darn brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So how big is the hole? It depends on the seed. They I have see. all different size cells. That's seeds. not okay. one, is it? That's what that is. Oh, that's that's what it, that is. right? So you put the seeds on there, the vacuum sucks it in down to the holes, right? You leave the vacuum on, you come over here. This looks like the 128 right here. You pop it over, you turn off the vacuum. Bingo. Bing. They drop in place. Unbelievable. All right, now then. Pretty darn. And people, a handy person can make one. Even if you don't really need it, you can make one. Yeah. All right, but do you shake the old loops? <laughs> with, you do you get rid of the seeds when the vacuum is. While the vacuum holds the seed on the hole, the vacuum's it? holding the seed on the hole. Come and you put it, it over your over your 128. Pretend that's a 128, well, right? What about the rest of the loose ones that are around in there? Oh, you, you take them off first. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, right. 
Okay. The, while the vacuum's on, yeah. you dump your excess seed off. Okay. okay. You know, okay. you leave the vacuum on, right? Yeah. yeah. And then you flip it over and turn yeah. the vacuum off, okay. and bang, you got, got it. it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. It's I really out of I knew you could do it. We That's didn't cool. really need. At, I, we taught this at the um, probably the 2006 Sustainable Ag Conference, yeah. and we really didn't have many people in the classroom that were going to build it. But everybody was kind of curious, like you are. And when we actually did it. We got an applause because <laughs> credit made it. People just thought it was so cool, you know. Yeah. But I mean, really, I use them only in the in the, the main rush of the season, like yeah. our big push. Yeah. Now that it's down here, I'll use it, you know. Yeah. But we don't even grow enough. I mean, no, it's really for acres. The rest of us don't buy enough seeds to even do that. Right. You can't even <laughs> cover the thing with it, right? So it's, <laughs> yeah. um, okay. So that's one way to seed. We're going to talk about other ways to seed, but first we're going to show stepping up because now that we've done this, we have to step up. Where's the soil? Behind right you, back. to your right. right. This soil is barely damp enough, by the way. I should have made it a little wetter. I watered it while you were uh, doing it, but no, we're okay. It'll work, you know. Um, and so then, Ellen, would you hand me, hand me an empty flat? I'm trying to show techniques here. And can somebody find a home for these? Get them out of the way. Thank you. All right. This is another size I really, I mean, I'd say that between 128s, 288s, 72s, and 36s, the four packs, that is 95% of all sizes I use in starting plants, you know. Um, this is a really nice size. I rarely need to go over that unless I'm doing something like tomatoes, peppers, or squash, which these are all way too small for. By the time they're going to get in the ground, they're going to be really undernourished if they're in this size, you know. But for most every other vegetable, this size is perfectly fine. You should get it out in the ground before you let it go any further, you know? Once in a while, like right there, those are the, um, those nine packs. Those are Tina James Magic Evening Primrose, mm -hmm. and they were tiny. And since it's not a really critical plant, I'm kind of like got those grown for when we find places to put them. They might sit in, their, in those packs for a long time, so that's why I made them a little bigger, you know? Because we can transplant them anytime, but they may well sit there till. Is May this or the something. Evening primrose that you would get evening primrose oil from. You could get the oil from it. What's special about it is that particular primrose, at dusk you can watch the flowers they pop open. Mm. They they actually have motion to them. I've seen people jump up and go, oh, they're alive. And it's like, yeah, well they're all alive. These are animated. That's what you like about them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, they're very special, and everybody should have them. I don't have enough to give them away this year, but you come through this fall. I'll send you home with seedlings or seed. Didn't I hear you say you were going to be doing uh, courses here at least once a month? Now? I am indeed. Positively. Okay, so best practice would be to have a scoop, right? Put a whole scoop full on top. Spread it around, right? Do it on a table so whatever you spill is not going to go to waste, right? You don't want to be taking your time filling one at a time, right? Flop it on. Spread, don't spill it on the ground like I did, though. I'd be a little bit too dramatic with being fast. Right? And eventually you'll figure out what size scoop, it'll be one motion, right? Scoop on, spread it around. What's wrong with this picture? I set this up for doing seeds. Yeah, I was That's just too much. say, how are you going to have <laughs> That's too much. Flags. That's what's wrong with that picture. So, can I have another um, yeah, sure. thing? We will use that for seeds. Next demo. <laughs> and so it's pretty easy. You just do about half as much, you know? The size of these... You can look at it and say, okay, if I do it about half full, when I firm that down, it'll work fine, you know? Um, this here, seeing these answers the question of how much sterilizing we do, right? <laughs> I mean, and indeed, I love her. She's a good friend. Um, I'm not going to mention her name right now because there might be judgments as to her call on that. But she just always says, Pat, why would you do that? I always buy new ones every year. And she just was, you know, she got sold on that, got to keep things clean, don't want any problems. Mm. And to her, it's better to throw away all this plastic. You know, what I love about the nonprofit that I work with is we have a conventional grower. He looked at it and said, it's, you know, by the time you do the labor of saving those all, we had to sterilize them now. There's just no way. It's not cost effective to throw those away. And I said, well, we'll, we'll put that to the nonprofit. Should we save these or throw them away? Should we save money or waste materials? And they said, wait, save money. I mean, waste materials. I mean. Should we, save, should we save money or waste labor? And they said waste labor, you know, um, because... So you sterilized those? We did not. Right. We sterilized them once because of that early blight. We sterilized everything we worked with once because of early blight. Ugh. But we have not sterilized it How since. How did you do that? We had a pressure washer in here. We pressure washed this. 
and then we had a power sprayer and we power sprayed it with ox it was it took some when did we do it we did it in february when things mm. were slow you know you don't want to do that in march you know so i can't just flop it down because it'll fill them up too much but i just can do this and they fill up pretty quick and the ones that overfill, that's where I stick whatever I broke, you know, whatever's a, not a full um, cell pack. And then they come along, I just pop them in, come back, throw some soil behind, and always, always, always firm them in, you know? So the fact that you're catching a, a leaf or two down in there... Oh, actually, the, the uh, best practice is to take those dead cotyledons off okay. and to bury below it, you know? Um, and so what I should have done was take those off before I flipped them. Okay. That'd be the fastest, you know. They come off pretty darn easy. They're they're a point for potential rot. I've actually never seen it, but I've had people say best practice is to take it off, and okay. so I still do. When you you're know? pulling the plants out, are you just pinching them off with your thumbnail, or are you pulling them out? Pulling the pulling the pulling the leaves off. Yeah. Well, whatever. All I'm doing is pulling leaves off, and I'm I'm oh, pinching I'm, them off. That's all. You know. If you were thinning them. If I was thinning them, how? Okay, my preferred way to thin because I like to save them. I see. Right. Which, I mean, if Lisa's filming this and then a professional sees it, they'll just laugh at me, right? Because it's just not professional to do that, right? So I'm not much of a professional. I don't know what to say, right? But what I do is I hold the plant in like this with my finger. Because uh -huh. I, I want this one to do best. If I try and divide it, yeah. I'm going to be damaging one. Yeah. But these guys I know will live, right? I hold that in and I just do a quick pull. Okay. So I've done no damage to the root ball. There's a little bit of root on there. Yeah. You know that if I stick a bunch of these in some soil, they're going to come on. I'll pass them on to somebody else. They'll yeah. step them up. They'll be happy they had them. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. sure. um, but it's not, you know, it's nothing that a pro would do. They, they snip them because they don't want to do any damage to the yeah. root of either uh, of the one that's living. Yep, exactly. Or the one that they choose yep. to live. But the way I do it, actually, there's precious little damage, you know? By holding it, the one that I want in and doing a sharp pull, there's very little damage. Um, really, what I'm not doing here which should be done is I should be taking these down to two, to one per cell, you know. But he said he brought them for you guys to look at, is what he said. Yeah. Oh, he Rocco too? said he brought seeds yeah. in here. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of them. He said. Okay, he well, maybe that's how they got in here. Then. Yeah, That'd be he fine. brought them. Okay, for he brought the them class. in. Cool. Well, then they should have been in here. It's really it was only hot in here for a little while. It's probably not a big deal. Cleaning them up. If you really like those, you can have one. If you want the seed, you can have the seed. You know? There's actually ones on the gr on the fence that we're, we won't even think twice about your taking. Oh, okay. Go take them, you know. You don't have to bleach them because they're pretty moldy by now. Oh, okay. They're using hydrogen peroxide, you know, but um, you can have all the seed you want. We have no shortage of seed. Okay. You know? I would love to take one. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. I have to have a 40-year-old exercise plant. Okay, and we're going to stop there as soon as you got them stepped up. Yeah. We don't need to do any more. But we will come back. So you put those in, but then you come back and you. And I tend not to push them down until after I've added the soil so that you're not. But actually, it's fine either way. It works either way. I take it back. Something about them leaning sideways in here that uh -huh. I want them to be standing up. Yep. That's pretty funny though. I mean, my favorite version of this is I teach people to take tomatoes when they're when they're really long and make a trench and lay them on their side. Who does that? And have the end stick yep. out. Yeah. And people go, but like now they slant the wrong way. I said, it's look so tomorrow. Teeny. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They won't take long before they're straightened up. Boy, they know where their food is. You know. They find it really fast. Yeah, do it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. We're not about money. We could put a little more soil. We're about giving that guy a chance to become the investigative journalist of plants. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. I'll stop okay. back by in a few weeks and see how he's doing. Yeah, you do that. Check it. <laughs> you want to name it? <laughs> Bob. Fred. Or Cinderella. <laughs> I don't want to pick this guy. You said we could take one of these. I'd like to take that one. That, that one right there. You got a shower? Yeah. You gonna scratch my back? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, let's. Oh. We're ready for the next process. It's cold down here. I tried to find the gadgets for seeding, but you know, I, I value them so little that I can't even remember where I put them. <laughs> and you've oh, probably okay. seen them, right? A little trowel. It's got some ridges. Sure, sure. You vibrate them out. 
okay? And then there's a little round circle that's got some ridges, and you vibrate them out, right? I, I find that they're... That you push the little button on? Yeah, I haven't even looked at that one yet. <laughs> oh. I just don't bother. They're way too much trouble and not nearly enough different from what I do to bother with. So, okay, and I'm not showing you the way I do it. You're trying to... Even home gardeners want to get done, right, and have other things to do. So instead of doing this, all your fingers, right? Why am I doing this? So the seed falls to the center. I kind of want my seeds to be in the center. Mm -hmm. It makes for a little bit better plant. I really don't sweat this. If it's not perfect, I don't care. You know, they'll figure it out. This is a technique I really try and teach. And people go, well, the seed might stick on the glue, so you should do it the other way. The problem with doing it this way is you it. can't see what you're doing. Mm -mm. You know? So people have done this. You know how to do it. Has anybody done know how to do it? Should I teach this? Yeah. Yeah, I want okay, to Okay, all right. The key thing is, right, and this is actually... Um, Brassicas are actually harder than some things because they want to roll. But you want to get a thin line, right? See how that's a thin line? Mm. Can you get the, can you film that? Can Should I change the angle? I got it. Got it? Okay. You want a thin line. See how it's a thin line? What you don't want is this. Because now, when you tap it, right? Now I don't have a thin line. I got a whole bunch. I tap it and what happens, well one came out, but that's just to make me a liar. Mm -hmm. Usually what happens if you have a whole bunch, is a whole bunch fall out. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have a thin line, when you tap it, one comes out, or two at the most. Okay? Like single final soldier. Yeah, right. You get a crease, you crease the bottom, right? And this does not work with huge seed packs. Don't even mm -hmm. try it. Just save a few small ones and transfer them to a regular standard size seed pack. Nice crease, right? Tap them out to a thin line, and then just come along. I just don't find any gadget that does it faster than that. Just one or two in each one, huh? I know that the seeds, these seeds are good, so I'm doing one. Some I just did two by mistake. I'm not going to worry about it, you know? Some of the seeds are so teeny. That did three. So I might teeny. Go, I, yeah, the teeny seeds, if they're really teeny, if they're like foxglove or something, yeah. the standard techniques is to mix it with cornmeal. Oh, okay. And then spread the cornmeal lightly over your thing. Okay. And then you'll get a much How better about distribution. Lettuce, like a, lettuce. 248 or whatever that is. First off, does anybody want to try this? No hands on experience, want it? Yeah, try it. <laughs> Just hold it and lightly tap it. Oh, this is a big, nice big seed. Yep, that's an easy one. Yep. Get along, little doggies. Where have you been? I stopped right about there. You might actually have that a little bit too close. Yeah, it worked. But if they're not flowing go good, open it up now? a little bit. Yeah, yep. Okay, great. Here's lettuce. What I'd like is a smaller seed pack. I can use, I can make I can't this work. Even see where the divisions are. I'm just going where your dents Wait, are. Go for the dents. The dents are yeah, that'll do you. If you follow the dents, you're fine. Yep. Yeah, actually, you might want to smooth that off a little bit more before you make the dents, so you're not confused by it. Um. Hmm. 